Today in Squad Busters, we're going to be going over 51 pro tips. Now, I've been playing this game since beta. I've won multiple tournaments and I'm currently pushing a free-to-play account. So I've decided to collect some of my favorite tips here for you guys. And there are going to be timestamps on this video if you want to skip to different tips. And with that all out of the way, let's get into tip number one. So the first tip is going to be use Trader all the time. He is the best healer in the game. I know I said healer because he will give you three gems for every 15 coins you collect. And from a classic form, he'll actually heal your entire squad. So even in modifiers such as Hatchling Herder, I will still sometimes pick a trader just for the healing. So the second tip is going to be hold on to your penny treasure maps until the final minute. And the reason for this is because you're actually going to get more loot in the final minute. And this makes a huge difference because you can go from being in fifth place to first based off just one or two treasure maps with really good luck. And this has saved me from losing games so many times. And in fact, for tip number three, everything drops double loot in the final 60 seconds of a game. You'll get more coins from monsters. A trader will drop double gems. So instead of three gems for every 15 coins, it will be six gems for every 15 coins. And a bandit, instead of dropping 10 gems, will drop 20 gems. And when you kill a monster, instead of two gems, four gems per bandit. The final minute is the time to strategize a lot. Now, this isn't a tip, but please stop using bow. He's literally terrible. So bow's only good because he does a lot of damage against monsters, but he actually does hardly anything against players. And if there's a good player in your lobby, they will target you just because you have a bow because you're easy to kill. So I'm going to give you some alternatives that do a lot more than 200 damage against monsters and players. A penny will do 230 damage to everything and will drop a treasure map that you can actually abuse in the final minute. Jesse will deal 215 DPS to every Everything and spawn turrets. So that's 355 damage per second with a turret. And if it's an Ultra Jesse, it's 405 DPS. And if you have an Ultra Jesse, you get two turrets. That's 595 DPS that will target monsters for you. And also you get bonus coins every time you open up a chest because your turret will respawn. A heavy does 250 damage if standing still. A tank in a tank does 270 damage. And a single elite barbarian will deal 233 damage per second. And there are so many other troops that deal 200 damage per second as well. So when you fuse up a unit in the the game, you actually get many benefits. Your chest prices become cheaper and then that troop instantly heals back up. So if it was about to die, it literally just gets back to full health. But by far the biggest benefit that you might not have known is you actually instantly receive the ability for that troop. So the Ice Wizard's Ice Fan attack, which requires you to attack someone six times, you'll actually just get it for free if you fuse up your Ice Wizard, meaning the next attack, you'll then get the Ice Fan ability. And this is actually the same for every other troop. Now this is helpful because if you're fighting somebody, you can open up a chest, purposely decide to fuse a worse troop just to get the ability just to scare them off to make them run away from you or literally just to take them out. Anyways, time for a bunch of turbo tips. Now, starting with the Hog Rider, he gives you free speed while you're running on grass and that's not the important thing. Now, the thing is your turbo actually regenerates while you're sprinting with the Hog Rider on grass. So you can be sprinting and regenerating your sprint button. It's OP. If you can't find a patch of grass on the map for your hog rider or you're running away from somebody, just simply run into the vines. The vines actually act as grass and then you'll get another speed boost to run away from your enemies. Now this one isn't really a tip. It's more of a very important fact to know. But once you leave the grass area, the hog rider's speed boost without you having to use your own speed boost will actually last for three seconds. After three seconds, you'll then have to either find new grass to sprint again or you'll have to start using your sprint button yourself. And in those three seconds, yes, you'll sprint will actually recharge. So if you've ever tried to drop a bomb spell on somebody and then you've realized, oh wait, I don't want to use that spell anymore. Well, you can actually cancel the spell by simply dragging the spell really far away across your screen until it goes gray. Once it goes gray, let go and boom, you didn't use the spell. And talking about spells, if you guys have ever had a wizard, you will know there are two spell slots. Now, if you want to actually use the second spell and not the first spell, simply tap on the second spell slot very quickly and boom, it will switch. You can now use the second spell as your main spell. So for this next tip, it's more of a in fact, if you've ever been shrunk in battle, it's the purple spell that makes your troops look small. Run away, don't fight, makes it so you deal 90% less damage. And if you don't know what that means, well, if you have a cult that deals 200 damage per second, your cult now only deals 20 damage per second. I've been in so many fights where I've been double, triple the size of my enemy. They drop a shrunk on me. I thought I could keep killing them because I had a rage spell, but no, they started killing my troops because the shrink spell is busted. And the normal rage spell actually deals 6% more damage. So if you have a cult that deals 200 damage per second, well, it now deals 320. In the modern Modified chest man is that big chest in middle can be a pain to take out because it's constantly stunning your troops and attacking you. Well, if you want it to stop attacking you, simply just drop a building in the very middle of the map and the chest menace won't be able to do any more abilities. And in that time, you can take him out, take all the loot without being interrupted. At the very start of the modifier golem meteors, two golems will spawn from the sky in middle, dropping a bunch of gems. Now, these golems actually despawn immediately straight after, but the gems don't despawn. So if you rush middle at the start of golem meteors, you're literally going to get a 
a bunch of gems for free, uninterrupted, and then two new golem meteors will spawn again in middle. Literally, you get a stupidly big advantage if you rush mid at the start of golem meteors. So in the modifier tree giants, I actually have two tips. First of all, the tree giant actually doesn't have that much health. He only has 12,000 health compared to a kaiju that has 10,000. Honestly, it's worth going for the tree giants if you're noticing yourself ignoring them because you think it's too much effort. But also, a Greg actually does bonus damage against tree giants. You can see he actually pulls out his axe when fighting a tree giant, but he won't pull out his axe when fighting anyone else. And that's because he does more damage against tree giants, and you can actually pick a Greg to get normal trees and then take out the tree giant faster. When playing the modifier Crystal Forest, it requires efficiency. Now, when you take down a tree, it takes about a second for the loot to drop and get into your inventory. So try to get into a habit of taking down a couple trees, then running back, picking up your loot, and then going for more trees. Now, this might only save like a second, but it's worth it, and it will give you an advantage. In the modifier Golden Boots, a singular Golden Boot will actually last for 20 seconds, which is a long time. Now, this is important to note because if you've only got a quarter of your Golden Boot left, well, that's exactly five seconds, and you know you have five seconds to find a new Golden Boot. Also, picking a Hog Rider in Golden Boots is not a dumb idea. It's not dumb because if you run out of Golden Boots, you are completely screwed. People will kill you. In the modifier Hatchling Herder, I actually have two tips. Tip number one, use a bunch of splash damage troops. Archer, Miner, Dynamite. But also, if you want to steal a bunch of somebody's chickens last second, take a bomb spell. You drop it onto their chickens, and boom, they're all yours. And in fact, for this next tip, I'm going to show you how to counter the tip that I just gave you. If you use a Battle Healer, it actually affects the Chicken Hurdlers. So a battle healer increases the health of your squad by 600 HP. That affects the chickens. So if somebody uses a bomb on you, well, they can no longer take your chickens. So the battle healer is actually the best epic in the game if you're playing Hatchling Herder. In fact, for tip number 19, a lot of people don't seem to know this, but the battle healer's healing effect, which is 600 health, actually stacks. So if you have two battle healers, you'll get 1,200 extra health. The more battle healers you have, the more extra health and more invincible you become. Now in the desert map, you've probably seen those little swirly tornado looking light thingies. If you stand on them for like a second, you'll get a bunch of coins, gems, or more. So it's something worth doing. Holding down the blue speed boot actually makes your squad attack faster, which you can use to take people out faster, but be careful because if you use all your sprint to take someone out and then it turns out you're losing the fight, well, you're not gonna be able to run away. It takes exactly two seconds to use a speed boot. Now, this is a fact worth knowing because if you have 10 speed boots, you have 20 seconds worth of speed before you run out. And if you're in the final 20 seconds of the game, you know you can comfortably hold down that speed boot and outlast everybody. If you have a fused Mavis, go to the middle for carrot patch. That way you can get all the carrots without having to take out a couple carrots, then a couple more. To claim 10 coins for free every couple hours, in the plaza there should be a little troop that glows and has little golden stars around them. Tap that, you get 10 coins. And in fact, to get more coins, when you're checking out your daily quest, you can actually see how many coins each quest will give you. You can actually reset a quest if it's only 150 coins to then make it become 250 coins to get an extra 100 coins. And it's actually free. It doesn't cost money for the first time. Then it costs 10 coins, but it's totally worth it. 150 coins, refresh it. Now the chicken is a great way to get speed in the game, but there are some alternatives. A blue box will actually drop two speed boots. A chicken drops three, but if you can get one or two speed boots, that's as if you've gotten a chicken and a half. A hog rider will regenerate your speed and it's just infinite speed. And whenever someone takes out your troops, you actually regenerate some turbo. So if someone's chasing you down, you can actually regenerate your turbo and keep running away from them. It's kind of broken. Now, there are a lot of bots in this game. And if you want to know if you've been killing bots, go into your replays and then tap on the names. If when you tap on a name, it shows the profile, well, it's a real player. If it doesn't show the profile and you're tapping on their name, well, it's a bot and well, you beat a uh, bot. Also, bots can't get streaks of 10 or over. In the modifier Angry Vines, do not run Bandit or Trader. Maybe you could use a Trader for some healing, but only one because it is not worth it. Everybody will go for your neck. But running a Mavis or Greg, although people make fun of you for, it's actually really helpful because the coins you're going to get is going to help you get a bigger squad of DPS to then kill more players in Angry Vines. Pick Mavis and Greg in Angry Vines. I think it's worth it. Once you've used up a speed boot, it isn't gone forever. It actually regenerates. So if you had five speed boots and you've used up all five. Well, if you just stop running for a little bit, you'll actually regenerate back to five. And this is also what makes the Hog Rider so broken. Now, Mortis is an amazing troop in the game. He makes your squad look more powerful. He tanks for your units, but you're only going to get the most out of him in a couple maps. The Lava Map, there are so many monsters to take over. The Mini Pekka is amazing. The Desert and Green World have the Bowler and the Green Goblins that you can take over. But the other maps, don't use him, especially in the Ice Map. Mortis is terrible. The tank breaks grass in the map. So if you have a Hog Rider and you have a tank in your squad, well, the grass is going to break, meaning when you try to run over that grass again for a speed boost, well, you're not going to get it. So be careful when you're running a tank. You can use it to your advantage if you're running away from somebody, but just be careful. Now, the gem mine in middle in the final 60 seconds actually starts spawning gems at the 55 second mark. Not at the 60 second mark, but the 55 second mark. This is helpful if you want to time a bomb to take those early gems. And at the exact 15 second mark, it'll actually blow up and spawn a bunch of gems in. 
This is something you can turn to drop a bomb in middle to then take all those gems. Now, there are many healers in squad busters, the battle healer, the medic, the pam, but you actually don't need them. You'll be surprised. A trainer at classic form will heal your squad. A mavis at super form will heal your squad. A penny at super form will drop hearts to heal your squad. A greg at ultra form will drop hearts to heal your squad. A heavy classic will heal himself. A shelly classic will heal herself. A king super will heal himself. A queen super will heal herself. An el primo ultra will heal himself. A tank ultra will heal herself. The wizard has the chance to drop a healing spell and the miner at super will heal himself. Essentially, a lot of troops in the game either heal themselves or your squad. You don't always need a pam or a medic. I will only pick them if I'm in like the lava map or I'm about to die. So for the first two minutes of the game, you'll mostly get commons from your chest, not really rares or epics. But when you hit the two minute mark, you'll actually get rare chests. And in the final one minute, all the chests will turn into epic chests. This is important to know because if you're waiting to get a hog rider, it might genuinely be worth at the two minute and 30 second mark, not opening any more chests. Wait until the rare chests spawn in, get a hog rider pretty much easily. Now a very important stat that people ignore in the game is the purple circle above your character's head. This indicates when you're going to be using an ability. For example, an ice wizard's ice fan attack, which can wipe out entire squads, will only happen if the purple circle completely fills up. This is useful because if you have a full purple circle that's flashing, go up to a player with your ice wizard, boom, take him out. And for the next tip, it's going to be know your health. It's the blue circle above your head, the most important stat in the whole game, because if you have a really OP squad with only half your health, someone's going to wipe you out. And the same for your enemies. If you see your enemies don't have much health above their head with the blue circle, go fight them. You might just be stronger than them, even if they think you're not. Now, this is basic, but check your squad rotation before each game. When you press play, those are all the troops that you can find in your next battle. So you can actually think in advance what squad you're going to build. Now, if you're in squad league, this will change every 12 minutes and everybody in squad league has the exact same rotation. But if you're not in squad league and you're in the squad journey, well, you actually have a different rotation each game and it's not the same as everyone else in your battles. Now, this tip actually links into the last tip, but if you're not in squad league, you can really abuse the fact that you have a different rotation to other players. So if you ever get a chest multiplier, you need first place because if you get first place, you get extra taps on your chest and also it helps your streak. So if you have a chest multiplier, wait until you see Hawk Rider and Trader in your rotation. Don't fight any players, just run Trader, get a bunch of coins, a bunch of gems, win your games. And well, because you have a different rotation to everybody else, there's a good chance Mojo Lobby doesn't even have Trader and they physically can't compete with you. Now, chest prices in the game are actually based off your squad size. If you have one troop in your squad, a chest will cost three coins, two will be five coins, three troops is 10 coins, four troops is 15 coins. When you fuse up a unit, it actually counts as one troop only, funnily enough. So if you have two fused units, that will only be five coins for your next chest. And that's why it's so important fusing up units because your next chest will be much cheaper, meaning you can get a more OP squad. How should you be spending coins in the game? Well, the quick answer is chest tickets is the best value in the entire game. Five chest tickets, which cost 10,000 coins on average, will get you 41.5 troops. And the shop, well, you can literally see here on screen how much one single troop is worth for its rarity. Pretty much chest tickets are going to make you progress about three to four times faster than buying troops from the shop. But I would genuinely suggest if you want to buy a new troop, I would buy the Hog Rider for 100,000 coins because it changes the game in such a crazy way to where you get infinite speed that is constantly recharging. Having the Hog Rider alone will get you more first place wins, meaning you actually get more for your chest tickets. And if you want to buy a troop from the shop, I would suggest buying the Trader up until soon. Super. Even though it's a bad deal, it's good to have a super trader because more first place wins mean your chest tickets are worth more. So sometimes spending coins on these two really good troops are worth it just to get you more first place wins to make your chest tickets worth more. So the spells that drop around the map, there are actually increased chances for certain spells. A cannon will have a 28% chance of dropping, a bomb a 21% chance, a lightning a 14% chance, a log will have a 10% chance of spawning in, a rage is 7%, a heal is 7%, a free spell is 7%, and a furnace and a shrink spell, they are only having a 3% chance of spawning in. Essentially, if you see a rage or a shrink spell, hold on to them. They're rare and they'll give you huge advantages. In fact, if you actually have a bomb spell, which is really common to get, if you drop it on a tree or a bunch of carrots, you can actually get a couple coins from them. Yes, it's less than Mavis or Greg, but it's worth it if you want to get a couple coins and honestly to stop other people from abusing their Mavises and Gregs. Now, aiming spells is actually incredibly important in the game. If somebody's chasing you and you have a bomb or a free spell, rather than dropping the bomb straight on you as you're running away, drop it a little bit in front of you so as the player runs into you they get pushed back making it a lot harder for them to chase you down and for my pay to win viewers stop buying coins from the in-game shop if you go to the official store.supercell.com website online you can actually get 10 percent more coins just by buying it on their official website because they want people to not buy it from in-game 
And this is what I do when I'm making my big spending videos. It kind of helps me save a little bit of money. The Barbarian King will actually make it so every melee troop in your squad attacks faster. So if you have a Barbarian, it will attack faster if you have a Barbarian King in your squad. The same with an Arch Queen. The Arch Queen will make all your long range units attack faster. In fact, for tip number 46, the Archer Queen buff is really OP. You can see here, if you have one Arch Queen in your squad, every single long range troop will deal 23% more damage. If you have nine Archer Queens in your squad, I know a crazy amount, you will deal 123% more damage. So a tank deals 270 damage per second. If you have three fused Archer Queens, well, it will now deal 602 damage per second. And that's why Archer Queen and tank is such a ridiculously OP combo that I suggest you try out. Stop fighting all the time. When you choose a fight, try to look for two players who are already fighting and actually third party the fight. That way you're not losing units because they're already attacking each other and you can just steal a bunch of the gems, rip them apart and well, get the lead. Don't be the guy who 1v1 somebody, loses a bunch of troops, 1v1 someone else, and then just get third parties and ends up dying. Now, there's actually a chest cycle in the game. So the chests, no, they aren't random. So if you get a rare, a common, a rare, a common, a common, a rare, and a rare, you now know your next three chests are going to be commons, and then you're going to get two epics pretty close together. This is when you could potentially use a chest multiplier. Although in my opinion, I don't care about the chest cycle, but if you care about it, observe it on screen. The log spell is amazing for either running away from players or for stealing kills. I've used the log spell so many times to simply steal a kill or to steal a tree giant boss or maybe other bosses. It's really good. Hold on to a log, steal some loot and get the wins. So I'm going to give you guys some of my favorite troops to start the game off with. So obviously the two best troops to start off a game is going to be Greg and Mavis just so you can get a bunch of coins to then upgrade your squad even more. But if I don't get those troops, I like to run heavy DPS troops to try to take out blue boxes quick to rush middle and get a bunch of speed. So a Penny and a Jesse will actually two tap boxes. A tank will one tap a blue box and I would suggest starting with a tank. You rush middle, get your tank in a tank, immediately take all the blue boxes. And a Shelly is my favorite common to start off a game with. I used to start off with barbarians a lot. I've stopped doing that recently because it takes four hits to take out a blue box and that's way too long. A goblin can also be a good troop to start off a game with as long as it's at least a super. And for tip number 51, this isn't a progression tip or a PvP tip. It's more of a fun thing to know. If you're in the plaza, you actually can't put these big statues up here at the top where you see these bushes. But if you want to put a big statue there, simply place down a normal decoration like you see this flower plot. Then click on the flower pot, switch it with one of the big statues, and you can get the big statues in an illegal position. Anyways, that's it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me do a tier list, make sure to subscribe and maybe I'll do one soon. And thank you for watching. If you want to check out my most recent video on Squad Busters to learn more about the game, then tap the video on screen right here. This is my most recent video and I promise it's a banger.